Hey there and welcome to the screencast about how to customize the web data menu. Now there's a lot of features available to you to customize the web data menu, but specifically what I'd like to show you how to do is how to create a custom template for the drop down items. So if you take a look here, we've got the link to the site, we've got the icon, but there's a couple other things that are going on here as well. Um, we, we've overridden some of the style sheets that come in by default from the Infragistics controls. Also, using Cascading Style Sheets, we've fixed the menu at the top of the page. Now, this is out without using any special JavaScript or a frame or anything like that. Since the, the browsers have become recently more sophisticated in the way they interpret CSS, this is actually very easy to do. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you how you can do this. So here we are in Visual Studio 2008. Um, this is running against uh, the 2009 Volume 1 release of the Web Client Tools. And what I have on the page is just a script manager and I brought on the Web Data Menu. So really nothing's been done with the controls yet, but we'll go ahead and start by providing some data for it. Now the, the Web Data Menu needs to work with some sort of hierarchical data source. So in this case what we'll do is use an XML source. And from here, I'll point to my XML file that has the information about the sites that we'll look at. And right now, what I want to do is to use the XPath expression of sites and then individual groups. Okay, now let's go over to the properties and start to fill this out a little bit. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is to show the, the menu horizontally. So if I come into the group settings and change the or orientation, I can have it to show horizontally. Um, I'd like to turn off the animation just for right now and a couple other things that seem to be appropriate is the width let's make it 100 percent and when you set the width here this is being applied to a div that wraps the entire control so that's a, a, a nice container uh, let's change the ID to be something kind of short web data menu and that should be good all right, let's close that off. Now, one of the next things that you have to do is to set up some data bindings. And that's basically because you've provided XML data to the control, and now you have to map it to the object model that the control uses for its, its data sourcing. So I'll click on group here, and I will add uh, a data binding. And from here, I can say, okay, well, which ones are appropriate? So for the key field, we need to add one in here, and that's the title. Um, this is the, the top level one, so we don't have a navigate URL. Um, the target, uh, the text field here would be title, and also the value field would be title. Now for the site, it's a little bit different because we're, we're taking a look at a different structure. So we have an image, image URL field, so we'll map that to, uh, to that same item in the XML. Uh, the key field in this regard will be name, and the navigate URL will match right up here. So the value field will be name, and the text field will be name. So that gives us everything that we need. So the next piece is to basically provide different templates for the different levels within the menu. So let's go ahead and edit the template collection, and we will add uh, two templates. The first one will be the parent, and the next one will be for the child. So now that those are defined, let's go down into the source and begin working with those templates. So we're going to change the, the ID here to match the template ID just so that everything's clear. So let's open up the template, and the markup that we'll use in order to grab the, the data that's coming from the source object and, and put it down in the template is this data menu item, container item, and then basically we're casting it as a data menu item so we can get the information out of that object. So for the parent, we're just going to emit out the text. The child, though, we're going to do a little bit more than that. So let's open up the template. And we'll create a link that has the image, the, the little icon image, and also the text for the link. So let's begin by getting an anchor tag on the page here. And then we're going to have an image. A 
And you'll notice that I'm changing some of these double quotes to single quotes, and that's because we're going to be using a binding expression in order to bring the data in. And because of it's, it's basically managed code that we're writing there, we have to follow the conventions of strings and characters and all that good stuff. Um, so finally, uh, we'll close our anchor tag here. So we need to delete this one here. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is place inside the href the, the uh, navigate URL. The source of the image will be the image URL. But let's take a look at the data for a second because there's something important that you need to, to consider here. If you notice, the image URL has the tilde. That's an ASP.NET convention for saying the root of the site. So what we need to do, this will emit out that data literally. So before we, we use it, what we need to do is run the resolve URL method against it. And now doing that will have a correct path. So for the alt tag of the image, what we'll do is take the text out of that, uh, that item. And finally, what we want to do is display the text again so that we have the text showing up in the, the link. So that does it for the markup, but there's one last step that you have to be aware of. Right now, the control doesn't know which one of these templates to apply at different times. So let's hook into an event, and we'll go into the item data bound event. And so we'll take a look at each one of the items as they're being data bound, and then tell it what template to use. So we'll take a look at the event args, and we'll say if this item's level is equal to zero, then the item's template ID is equal to parent. Otherwise, the template ID is equal to child. Okay, let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks. We're not quite done. We have a little bit of work left to do as far as the, the styling goes, but you can see we're getting close. So one of the things I want to show you how to do is that when you're working with one of, one of our controls, there might be a style sheet entry that you want to change, and sometimes it's not easy to figure out exactly how you're, you're going <laughs> to narrow down the class that you want. So at this point, what I want to do is open up Firefox, and from there I'm going to use a feature in Firebug that's going to help us out. So I have the Firefox extension Firebug installed, and if I click down here on this little bug and open this up, you can see that there's a number of different tabs I have available to me. What I'm concerned about right now, though, is the CSS tab. If I hover over an entry, though, you'll see that this little icon, if I click on it, it will disable um, the one, any one of these listings. So I can go through and disable a number of these items to see if I can try and narrow down what I'm looking for. It just so happens that I know what we're looking for, but I'll show you how we can find it uh, otherwise. So if we scroll down to this IGDM control horizontal, now watch up here as I, as I turn off some of these things. So if I turn off the background color and turn off the background image, see now we're getting to the point to where we can kind of figure out what we might need to adjust. So let's bring in some styles that will help us style our menu the way I want it to look, at least for this demo. So basically, we know that we need to use, we need to do something with this class here. So going back to Visual Studio, let's go to the ASPX page, and let's bring in some styles. So the IGDM horizontal control, I want to make the background image none. So we're taking off the background image that's there by, by default and then switching the background color to pound 999, which is like kind of a dark gray. And then if you'll look here, one of the issues that we have is that you'll see that the space between the image and the text um, has the underline. Well, I want to turn that off using our style sheet. So I'm just going to say text decoration none so that underline doesn't show up. And then I believe we call this WDM. So the div, I was telling you before about the div that is uh, created as a container for this entire control will have the ID of WDM. So we're going to say position fixed, top zero, left zero, and width 100%. So now, when we run this again, we should have something that looks like that. Now to test to make sure that it's actually fixed, I have a user control that has a bunch of text on it that I can just drop in here. And so now when we refresh the page, 
we've got uh, some text to scroll through. So there you have it. That's a pretty easy way to customize the web data menu. Well, thanks a lot for checking out this video. And if you have any questions about what you've seen, please feel free to send me an email at cshoemaker at infragistics.com. If you want to take a look at the documentation for any one of our products, you can go to infragistics.com slash docs. And if you'd like to contact our support, you can go to infragistics.com slash support. Thanks again for checking us out and make sure you check out the website where you'll find a lot more videos that'll help you get started with the NetAdvantage toolset. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.